I want to talk about complexity economics and the climate crisis. Complexity economics studies economies as complex systems. In these complex systems, things like households, institutions, governments interact, and these interactions lead to situations in which the whole becomes more than the sum of its parts. And from these interactions, instability can arise because everything is related and everything depends on each other. Professor Wander, who is director of the Groningen Center for Social Complexibility, is going to tell us what he thinks about. In my view, the study of social systems in regular social science is often being done like studying an animal by first killing it and having a slice of the animal and studying the slice. And what we try to do in social complexity studies, and very often using simulations, by studying the animal alive. How does it grow? How does it move? Now, one of the most important things is that complex models are non-linear, which means that a change in output is not always proportional to a change in input. And this can lead to so-called tipping points. You know tipping points from the debate on the climate crisis. The idea is that you can reach a threshold where only a slight increase in emissions can suddenly lead to a huge increase in temperature. For example, if one ice sheet melts, um, the next ice sheet sinks down and faces a higher temperature, so it will also melt. And all out of a sudden, you have positive feedback loops and end up with drastic and irreversible changes. And social systems can also have tipping points, for example, when all out of a sudden, new norms develop. And well, all of these non-linearities, tipping points, feedback loops are very important in the context of the climate crisis, and they are things which can be investigated in complex models very well. Um, professor Azeo, who was Professor for Environmental Economics and Director at the Bayer Institute of Ecological Economics in Stockholm, will give his opinion on this. <laughs> in standard economic modeling, if something bad happens, you just go back and you can sort of restore things. But with a tipping point in climate, you cannot restore things. So if it happens, so if you are on the wrong trajectory, then the consequences are much bigger than the consequences are within the standard economic thinking. So if the consequences are bigger, the risks are bigger, and you take a different policy. Now, heterogeneous agents are also very important features of complex models. In agent-based models, for example, you don't have only one equation describing the behavior of all people, but different equations describing the behavior of different people with different characteristics. And people can differ in well-being, income, how environmentally conscious they are, and what is very important is that they can learn. And this can influence how they act and with whom they interact. All of these interactions can lead to a lot of instability and change. Instability and change do not always require a shock from outside of the system. Sometimes it arises from the interactions themselves. And these dynamics can, can lead to very damaging crises, as we have seen, but theoretically, they could also accelerate climate action, so they can also accelerate positive developments. And complex models um, help us investigate under which initial conditions such dynamics are triggered most easily. And we can ask very interesting questions. For example, what enables people and organizations to take agency? How can social innovations be scaled up? Um, what accelerates the diffusion of knowledge? So there are really many, many different interesting questions. When society at large is going into transition and fundamental changes take place, you need methods which can explain these changes. And complex models are very useful for that. Um, because as opposed to usual methods, people can learn from the past, change what they want, and change how they act. Now, if the past cannot tell us anymore what is going to happen in the future, how can we do policy then? This is what we ask Professor Wander. I think the uh, important role of complexity science is to first convince policymakers of the fundamental uncertainty of the future, and second, uh, to foster an 
policy climate that is more oriented towards uh, a scenario of development. Right now, right now at this moment in the midst of the COVID-19 uh, crisis, I think in terms of companies too big to fail, but if you look at the big transitions in the past, we also saw that certain businesses uh, really became outdated, new businesses uh, started to grow. For example, what would be the uh, consequence uh, of if uh, airliners uh, go bankrupt? I mean, that's a really a very challenging thought. I do not have a definitive answer on that. But I think computer simulations of complex systems help in developing scenarios of what would it mean if certain developments take place and provide some more grounded scenarios of possible futures that we want to avoid or some possible futures that might create new opportunities. Now, what are the next steps to go on with this research program on complex economics? I think we need more people and we need them to be educated, not in a narrow discipline, but we need them to be able to talk to other researchers. We've scratched the surface of the things we can do with, with the ideas from complexity theory. The climate crisis is like falling off a cliff in slow motion. We cannot afford to wait until the effects are obvious to everyone, and we need to do it uh, all together. We need, need to cooperate.